back to Sanford Flip Math. This is AP Calculus. Uh, we are working on rules for derivatives early in the morning on Tuesday. It's just Will and I hanging out together. Uh, just a quick recap. Uh, remember, we've talked about the power rule now. This is fair game. We can use that anytime we want. And uh, I've kind of condensed like the first four rules uh, from the previous video into one rule that I'm calling uh, Sanford's power function rule. You can call it whatever you want, and I'm sure it appears in other books. It just doesn't appear in our book this way. Uh, and just a reminder that uh, the, the shots from the, uh, from the book are from Finney, DeMann, and Waits Kennedy uh, calculus book, Graphical Numerical Algebraic, which is the calc book that we use. And uh, so that's where uh, these product rule and quotient rule shots are stolen from, and they're in section 3.3. Um, so uh, I'm not going to say much about the product rule, just to remind you that it exists, and we are going to use it uh, quite a bit. It's going to come up all over the place. Um, sometimes uh, there are expressions that are a little more complicated that maybe we don't want to multiply out, or maybe it's uh, difficult to multiply out, or maybe, it, maybe it's impossible to actually uh, make into a polynomial. Um, and so, you know, things like x squared times the natural log of x, that there's no way to simplify that. And if I have something like this that I want to take the derivative of, then I'm going to need a way to find the derivative of this and a way to find the derivative of that, and then somehow put that together. And the thing that you're not going to like is that the, you can't just multiply the derivative times the derivative and expect that that's the derivative of the product is it's just not true. So just a quick heads up. It's like you, you can't, you, you can do the derivative of a sum as the sum of the derivatives when things are added or subtracted, but not when they're multiplied. So here here's the rule uh, for the derivative when two things are multiplied. So this is called a product rule. And <coughs> all this says is you, you take the first times the derivative of the second plus the second the second factor, that is, times the derivative of the first. Okay, now I know I just covered everything up, so let me clean it up a little bit. Um, it's probably worth noting that I'm actually going to switch this rule around the other way. Uh, addition's commutative, so we can. Um, and the only reason is, uh, I'm just kind of looking ahead and seeing, look, this rule looks kind of like this rule, and I just want them to be a little more consistent. So I'm going to write this instead, uh, v du dx, which I'm just going to say u prime, uh, plus u dv dx, which I'm going to say v prime. Okay, so so basically the the short version of this is that you have to do uh, one of these times the other's derivative, and then the other times the first one's derivative. You know, and all of that needs to happen. Okay, so. Um, so Let's just do a quick example, and then we'll come back and talk about the quotient rule. Okay. All right. So let, let's say I have something like x squared plus two times uh, x cubed minus five, and so this is y, and I want uh, dy dx. Okay. Okay. So the rule said the derivative of u times v is v u prime plus u v prime. Okay, and the trick is keeping your u's and v's straight, but basically you're going to do the derivative of one of those factors and times uh, the original and vice versa. Okay, so here we go. So this is saying if, if I'm, I'm going to take this factor, so x cubed minus 5 times, times the derivative of the first factor, well, the derivative of the first factor, the derivative of x squared, is following the product, power rule, excuse me, 2 times 1 uh, times x to the subtract 1 from that exponent, plus, and then remember that the derivative of a constant is 0. So as you are probably aware, I, pretty quick here, I'm going to stop writing that. I just want you to be aware of it, okay? Plus, so I did the second factor times the derivative of the first plus the first factor. So that is x squared plus 2 times the derivative of the second factor, so 3x squared, in this case, minus 0, okay? And basically, we've done it. It's just a matter of can we clean this up a little bit. So, for instance, 2x I could distribute, so this is now 2x to the fourth minus 10x plus, this is going to be 3x to the fourth, um, 
plus 6x squared. And I, I don't need to distribute all the, the zeros because I know that's just nothing. And one last little thing here, I can clean this up and say, whoops, sorry. 5x to the fourth plus 6x squared. It's standard to have this in order uh, by uh, exponent descending. Okay. Um, now, what I'm going to do is, I, I just want to do a little compare and contrast here. Okay. That seemed kind of like a hoopla, and I, I just want to make sure you understand that for this exact problem, you really could do it with just the power rule if you multiply things out, and I just want you to see that, you know, all things going according to plan, it comes out the same. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute this out. So this is going to be x to the fifth. Uh, outer would be minus 5x squared. Inner is 2x cubed. And last is minus 10. So now I'm going to do y prime or dy dx. So that should be 5x to the fourth. 6x squared minus 10x. And that's pretty much it. And Okay, so my reason for doing that is to show you that the power rule works, uh, at least for polynomials. It's by no means a proof, uh, but it does at least give us some evidence saying that, yeah, okay, I see it. And again, the issue right now is not so much about multiplying polynomials and doing the derivative. It's really more about when, thing, when we can't multiply things out, but we have to start with something. So we're starting with uh, the stuff we already know how to do. Okay? All right, so that's that's the product rule. Let me pop back and talk about the quotient rule. Shockingly enough, the quotient rule has to do with division. So what we're saying is we're, we're dividing, and so we have a denominator and a numerator, or numerator and denominator, or whatever. They are currently listed in alphabetical order, top to bottom, okay, to keep this straight. And the rest of this looks kind of like the product rule on steroids. Okay, so I have a V U prime, and, and again, I'm, I just think this notation is a little easier to see. It, it looks a little complicated with the rest of it. U V prime all over V squared. Okay, so it, with bigger words, it's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, so the numerator prime minus, you know, etc. So denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. Now, there is a cute little mnemonic that, well, okay, I think it's cute. Uh, I always think of the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and uh, here we go. The derivative of high over ho is ho d high minus high de ho over ho ho. Isn't that very mathematical sounding? Ho de high minus high de ho over ho ho. Okay, and that's a h o. The idea here is, again, this is the derivative of high over ho. Okay, this is the seven dwarves version, like high ho. All right, so ho de high minus high de ho over ho ho. Again, all this is is a way to remember. If you think that's silly and it's not going to help you, then ignore. All right. Let's do an example. Okay. Blazing through. All right. So we're going to do uh, d dx, the derivative of, let's do uh, x cubed minus 1 over x squared. Okay. So, again, following the rule, so v u prime minus u v prime over squared. Again, this is the derivative of u over v. Okay, so that's the rule. Okay, so here we go. It says denominator times derivative of the numerator minus the numerator well, I should have co color coordinated. Times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. Okay, so uh, I'll do some. So this was the numerator prime, and this was the numerator. And this is the denominator, and the denominator prime. 
and the denominator squared. Okay, it's a little color coordination there for those of you following along at home. Okay, just finishing up. Bear with me. Red around red seems kind of redundant, doesn't it? So I just wanted you to be able to see that. All right, so I need to keep going here. Okay, so 3x to the fourth minus, now I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 2x. So uh, this is going to now be minus 2x to the fourth. Now, be careful with these signs because there's a lot of stuff going on here. So there's going to be plus 2x. All of this is over x to the fourth. A um, little bit more we can do with this. So this is x to the fourth plus 2x over x to the fourth. Uh, this is fabulous as you see it. Uh, and if you prefer, we can do a little bit of uh, division here. And if you want to call this uh, x to the fourth over x to the fourth would be 1 plus and 2 over x cubed. Okay, so that, that works also. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm fine back here or here. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with either, okay? Um, oh, I should probably mention, though, that we should have just divided out. There is an x in common all the way through. All right, so I take it all back. I'm sorry. x cubed plus 2 over x cubed. That I would be fine with. Okay. Um, as I did with the product rule, I want to just pop back and redo this whole problem again just with the, uh, the power rule. And because this is a single um, term in the denominator, I, I can get away with this. Um, but if this was not just a single term in the denominator, I would not be able to do it. All right, so I'm trying to steal the steal that problem. Let me bring it right there. There we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this. I'm going to take the, the terms of the numerator and do them separately. Okay, so again, I haven't done the, I'm not doing the derivative yet. I'm just rewriting this. Okay, so x cubed over x squared is x. And then 1 over x squared is x to the negative 2. Now, again, the only reason I'm doing this is I think it might be another way to do the problem. Okay, so now I can do the derivative of each term separately. So the derivative of x is 1. Okay, again, this is x to the 1, x to the 1. So multiply 1 times 1 is 1, times x to the 0, because I'm subtracting 1 from the exponent, which is just 1. Okay, so um, minus, well, negative 2 times the negative, this is going to be plus 2x to the, and remember, if you subtract 1 from negative 2, that's really negative 3rd. So this is 1 plus 2 over x cubed. Not very many steps for doing the derivative. It's just required some simplifying or rewriting of the original. Okay, well, there's 1 plus 2x to the third. There's 1, I'm sorry, 1 plus 2 over x to the third. 1 plus 2 over x to the third. Well, holy cows, Batman, that would be the same thing. Okay. All right, well, so that, that's how to use the power rule. I'm sorry, the power rule, product rule, and quotient rule, kind of all intertwined as needed. And... Uh, Let's, let's do something with this. Um, let's just do maybe one more problem. Um, something clever. I'm stealing this straight out of the book. So thank you to uh, Finney Demana Waits Kennedy. I know I keep saying that, but I just want to make sure it's clear that uh, I'm not trying to violate copyright issues or anything like that. Okay, so this is from page 124. Now, let me first say that you could do this whole problem without uh, actually using product rule or quotient rule if you multiply everything out, okay? Now, what we're supposed to do is uh, find the derivative. Now, th this is not the first problem you want to do. This, this has a lot of stuff going on, okay? So I'm purposely picking one that's ugly uh, just so we see what to do. The problem with this is there is a product and 
there is a quotient. So I have a product rule inside a quotient rule. Okay, so overall it's a quotient. So here we go. Denominator times the derivative. <laughs> yep, here we go. Times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator. times the derivative of the denominator. Oh, sorry, I gotta switch. Over the denominator squared. All right, let's just recap before I do the thing in the big long parentheses, okay? So again, I have denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. Okay, let me uh, back out some of my notations here so that I have room. Okay, the only, the only thing I haven't done here yet is the derivative of the numerator. Well, the numerator is a product. Okay, so if we're following the little rule here, I, again, I do the rule backwards because I want it to look like the, the quotient rule. So I'm doing V, the second thing, times the derivative of the first thing, plus, okay, product rule has plus, the first thing, times the derivative of the second thing. Okay, pause as you need to to go back and figure out what just happened. Okay, I'm following the product rule for just the numerator. Okay, so this is again v u prime, u v prime for the numerator. All right, well, I will tell you that the, new, that the derivative is actually done. It's just a matter of what kind of form are we going to leave it in. Okay. So I guess we'll do a little bit of cleanup here. Okay, so x squared. And all I'm doing is, you know, like um, multiplying things out a little bit, um, things like that. Okay, I'm, I'm minus x minus 1. Okay, same kind of thing over here. X cubed, well, this is nice. You know, I don't, I'm really not digging this. X cubed. Okay, and all of that over X to the sixth. Yep, I told you this is an ugly one. Sorry, I think these brackets need to go right there. Okay, getting closer. All right, so again, I'm just combining like terms now. So this is going to be 3x squared. Uh, the x and the x cancel out. The 1 and the negative 1 cancel out. Oh, that was nice. That was better than I thought it was going to be. Sorry, I just want to deal with that. On the other side, I need to distribute, oh, I got some stuff I can combine, x squared minus x squared, x minus x, so this is now 3x, well, this was 3x squared, so I can go ahead and distribute it by what's left, so 3x to the fifth minus 3x squared, oh, I'm so close, <laughs> this is kind of amazing, sorry, a little excitement there. Uh, 3x to the 5th minus 3x to the 5th minus 3x squared. I just, I just want to pop back up and make sure I didn't make a sign error with that last 3x squared. Aha, look at that. It was minus that negative 1. Okay, so this is really plus. Oh, look at me. I'm, 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 I'm kind of excited here. All right, so those divide, uh, add up to zero, and then I have 3x squared over x to the sixth, which reduces to 3 over x to the fourth. Well, that was, as I like to say, batugly. Uh, it's got the emphasis on the other syllable, doesn't it? Um, so that was, yeah, that was, that was quite ugly. All right, hang on just one sec. Oh, 
Okay, so um, that that's it. Now, I just want to make one other point here, and I don't want to go on and on about it. I just want to make sure it's uh, clear. All we're talking about right now are methods for finding derivatives. You could still be asked to do things like equation of a tangent line, uh, equation of a normal line. Um, I know one of the kinds of questions that's in the uh, in the homework, classwork, whatever, uh, has to do with uh, finding uh, where are uh, the tangent lines uh, horizontal. So you, you need to think about how these things work. You know, the equation of a tangent line, well, you need slope and a point. Uh, equation of a normal line, you need slope and a point. Horizontal, what's that mean for us? Well, it means slope is zero. Okay, so you might have to find uh, find something about slope and then find where is it zero. Uh, and remember, derivative is slope or slope of a tangent line. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that for now, and we can uh, discuss more in class. Thanks for coming.